Mental illness is not pretty. Mental illness is largely misunderstood by people in general. For, for me, it's, um, it involves a, a sort of complete, you know, total transformation of who I am and my being. Reverend Amoa Setefano is speaking out about his experiences with bipolar disorder. He wants his community to learn before they judge. This weekend, I want to encourage all our Pacific people, Ireland-born or New Zealand-born, in fact, all New Zealanders, to increase your awareness of mental illness. Bipolar is a mood disorder, and sometimes known as manic depression. As well as sometimes feeling extremely low, people go through periods of mania. They often have rapid thoughts and sleeplessness, as well as delusions of grandeur. Our culture has set stereotypes, uh, as probably all cultures do, of, of what we do with mentally disabled people, mentally unwell people. We, we cast them away. We label them and then we box them and, and we say, that yeah, that's their curse. He was 17 and a school leader when he had his first manic episode. In front of the school assembly, Amoa gave an impromptu and incoherent speech. And then I start ranting and raving about um, a sports report from the weekend. And, and, and I go off on all sorts of tangents and, and then all I hear is that the deputy principal say, Amoa, that's enough. One of the main reasons why I have the confidence and freedom to share my personal story. It's a huge rush. They don't have the ability You become to... out of control. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again. The first ones you lose coherence. Uh, I can't really talk properly. I'm actually, I rattle off 100 miles per hour as I'm thinking. I will not reason with anyone. Us as human people. Physically, I become very, very difficult to contain. This weekend, you actually feel that you have some sort of superior knowledge. When I'm driving, I think that I am actually like a, a Formula One driver, that I can you know, overtake people and stuff. They went out to seize him, for they were saying, he is out of his mind. When you're in that manic state, isn't anybody able to talk to you, make you see reason? No, I wouldn't be able to receive it, to accept them. Um, I would have been so high. Uh, that I'd say, OK, yeah, whatever, then I'll just carry on doing whatever I'm thinking. Amoa's first episode was completely debilitating. He woke in a psychiatric ward with a hazy memory of the school assembly. Uh, I had a lot of um, lonely nights in, in, uh, in the uh, psychiatric ward. I questioned a lot of things. Uh, I questioned God. I questioned uh, my parents. I questioned... Uh, why, why me? Um, and for, for me, that was the sort of stigma or discrimination that was going on. He's a Sambolez guy, loving, mm -hmm. friendly, mm -hmm. and you know, the man of your dreams when he's not manic, but when he's manic, he's like, you know, different. He's like the opposite to that. Life's good for Amoa these days, but the lows he's experienced have been crippling. When my wife and I were going out, um, I thought we were going to break up. So I come home, uh, drink all my pills as quick as I can, and then go to sleep. And basically, it was a suicide attempt. Um, but I came too. And um, again, it was, a, it was a matter of rebuilding, thinking again, hey, God doesn't want me to die. Experience with mental illness is different for everyone. In 15 years, Amoa has had eight episodes of mania. Staying well takes work, and Amoa's family help by just being there. It reminds me of my responsibility that I have uh, to my children and to my family as, as the father figure, as, um, as a role model, uh, as someone to look up to, and also as, as someone to lean on. Amoa has a master's in theology. He and his wife, Amelia, are student pastors. They were studying in Samoa and had been married for four years before Amelia witnessed Amoa's manic episodes for the first time. I think it was quite scary for me. Never seen him like that. It was like um, being with a, someone that, a totally different person, you know. It was like, um, it was very scary because, you know, I didn't know what to expect. With no treatment available in Samoa, the couple came home to New Zealand.
I was able to tell him what actually happened and he only remembered, you know, a few things of what had happened when he had had the episode. But, yeah, I think a lot of it was when I was telling him, he was like, wow, you know, did I do that or did I say that or was I like that? Well, well done. Well done. As a father, husband and pastor, Amoa was perfect for like minds like mine, a mental health awareness campaign to reduce stigma and discrimination. It's important that people see that uh, community leaders can actually speak from one who's experienced mental illness. Amoa sort of sees it as a second calling, helping the Samoan and wider community understand mental illness. Guys like him need acceptance, love and support. I always tell him that, you know, don't use this mental illness as something that's going to bring him down. Use it to be able to help others, help others that are going through, you know, what he's gone through and maybe let them come out and also do try to encourage others um, to actually see the good side of it and not just see them as, you know, some sort of minority group that they need to be outcasted into some little, you know, spot. Yeah. Mental illness is not a, a lifetime sentence. It's something that you do experience for a period of time, but it's something that can be worked through and lived through. And with the right kind of support, with, a, with enough information and awareness and education, um, all, all these episodes or all these um, cases where we thought that mental illness was a curse uh, from God or a curse because of a sin uh, can actually be worked through quite practically. Oh, Shut up!